Hey, what's going on everybody? Bro, doing well, and in this video I'm going to explain the media view node in JavaFX. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Alright, welcome back. We're talking about media views today. A media view is a viewport in which we can display a video or other media source. So the media view node is found underneath controls. Just drag and drop it anywhere. And to increase the dimensions of this media view, go to fit width and fit height and pick whatever dimensions that you prefer. Let's say 500 by 300. And you can change the layout X and layout Y properties as well. So if I change this to 100, this video would move 100 pixels to the right. But I'll set that to zero so it displays in the top left corner. So this is the displayable area for our video. So this is the media view. It's a viewport. Now let's give this media view a unique ID. I will call this media view. And let's create three buttons, a play button, pause button, and reset button. So go to controls, drag and drop three buttons, place them anywhere. Preferably not in front of the media view though, maybe down at the bottom. So we have our three buttons. Let's change the text. The first one will be play button. So this will be play, all caps, then pause, then reset. And let's give each button a unique ID, beginning with our play button. This will be play button, then pause button, and reset button. So each time that we click on one of these buttons, we will call a method, but we need to set that. So on action for our play button, let's say that we will call a method named play media, which we need to define later, followed by pause media, then lastly, reset media. Okay, let's make sure that our controller class is linked, save, and then head to our controller class. Oh, here's a trick that I found to refresh your FXML file. Right click on your project folder, and then go to refresh. So you don't need to keep on clicking back and forth to update your FXML file. Okay, so within our controller class, we will implement the initializable interface. I can never spell it. I think I spelled it wrong. There we go. Okay, then add any unimplemented methods. So we need to declare everything that we'll need. So at FXML, we're going to inject our media view. Private media view, media view. Pay attention to the capitalization I'm using camel case here. And we need our buttons. At FXML, private button, we have our play button, followed by our pause button, and our reset button. Okay, there's a few additional things that we'll need. We'll need a file, private, file, file, followed by private, media, media, private, media player media player now in order for this program to actually run we need to declare these methods of play media pause media and reset media so within our controller class after our initialize method let's declare those methods so we have public void play media then pause media And then reset media, public void reset media. Now to play a video, we'll need a video to work with. I have this MP4 file of a video that I took when I was in Tokyo a number of years ago. There was real life Mario Kart racing down the street. Here's the original video that I took. So to make this easy, I'm going to copy my mp4 file and then paste it within my project folder. Pay attention to where this file is placed. For me, it's directly next to my fx build file as well as my libraries. So if you're working with a lot of different media sources, I recommend creating a separate folder. But since we're only working with one, I really don't think that's necessary. Then within your initialize method, we're going to finish instantiating our file, media, and media player objects. But let's begin with file. File equals new file, then in the constructor list the file name or the file path. So mine is named Mario Kart 
dot mp4. Then next we're going to create and instantiate our media object. Now the media object contains information about your file such as the duration, metadata, tracks, and a video resolution. So we're going to add our file to our media object on the next line. Media equals new media, then pass in the name of your file, file dot to URI followed by dot to string. Now you may or may not run into this exception when you run the program as of now. So we ran into a invocation target exception caused by super class access check failed class javafx.scene.media. So that means that we probably need to add a VM argument to our run configurations. So to solve this, go to run, run configurations, then go to your project, arguments, then under VM arguments, you're going to add this line. Then apply, then run. And this should work now. One other common issue is the placement of your MP4 file. If I was to move my MP4 file to my source folder, well, it's no longer going to be directly within my project folder. So if I was to run this now, we would encounter an exception because this file will no longer be found. One test that you could do if you're having some trouble locating your mp4 file is to take your mp4 file and then paste it to an easy to access place like your desktop. Then let's right click, go to properties, find your location, copy this, and then precede your file name with the file path. So let's run this again and we should be able to at least locate this file. Now we have our file object as well as our media object. Our next task is to create our media player object. A media player provides the controls for playing media. So within our initialize method, we will finish instantiating our media player. Media player equals new media player. And within the constructor of our media player, we need to pass in a media object that we intend to play. Now there's going to be a no apparent change, but there is one way in which we can test this. So within our play media method, we're going to take our media player and use the play method. And this will at the very least play the audio, but we will be unable to see the video. So we should hear some go-karts. Now to view the video, we need to add our media player to our media view. Our media view acts as a viewport to view a video. So type media view dot set media player, and we will pass in our media player and we should be able to view the video now. So here's my video, and I can play it by hitting the play button. Now let's work on the pause button next. So within the pause media method, let's type media player dot pause. And honestly, it's as simple as that. So we should be able to play, and pause, and play, and pause again. And lastly, let's reset. So we'll type media player dot seek. And this argument is kind of strange. We're going to pass in duration dot seconds, then pass in 0, 0.0. So this will reset the media player to zero. So we can play, we can pause, and we can reset and then play again. Pause, play, pause, reset. Oh, here's one thing that I noticed that you should be aware of. So before you actually play the video, if you click reset and then play, you will hear the audio, but the video will not be running. So to fix that, we can add this line. Let's add an if statement within our reset method. If media player dot get status does not equal media player dot status dot ready. So that should fix that for you. So if we were to reset and then play, then the video and the audio will move together if you were to hit reset first before playing. Well, okay everybody, that is the media view node. It acts as a viewport in which we can view a video or other media source. If you would like a copy of this code, I will post this to the comment section down below. 
But yeah, that is the media view node in Java FX.